All right, we continue to see the ripple effects from the Supreme Court's Dobbs decision spread out across America. Facebook and Instagram have started removing posts about abortion pills to women who may not be able to access them, memes and status updates um, that explain how women could legally obtain abortion pills in the mail exploded across those social media platforms. That's according to a recent NPR report. But parent company Meta has censored those posts. Pro-choice advocates say this is unfair censorship. Healthcare providers also say they've noticed a sharp spike of requests for birth control pills, emergency contraception, these abortion pills as well, uh, CVS and other drugstores saying they're limiting now the purchase of some of these pills because of demand. We also see laws changing in states and courts uh, reacting differently to those new state laws. The U.S. District Judge has ruled that South Carolina's law banning abortions at six weeks after a woman's first menstrual cycle can go into effect. But we have a judge in Louisiana. That judge has blocked that state's trigger law, which was passed all the way back in 2006, in case we ever got to this place where the court overturned Roe v. Wade. The Louisiana law makes no exceptions for cases of rape or incest. Let's talk about this now and welcome in our panel. Uh, at least welcome in Morgan Zager. She's the founder of Young Americans Against Socialism. Morgan, great to have you with us. Thanks for having me, John. All right. So, I mean, we do see a lot of turbulence now, but this, I think, is just a sign of how wrong the Roe decision was. I mean, because all these laws, uh, this was really, you know, a state issue to begin with. Uh, and we're, we see these states now making the changes, as you would expect in a federal system like we have. Yeah, I, I mean, it's highly appropriate that we're seeing this, John. Unfortunately, what's happened, especially with my generation, I'm in between millennials and Gen Z, this concept of a federal abortion right has been very normalized for young women. And so they're very confused. Unfortunately, our civics classes aren't the best in our country. And so we don't understand the concept of federalism, of the 10th Amendment in our Bill of Rights. And we are genuinely confused and they do feel like their rights were taken. So I see this as an information situation where we can really reach them and, and let them know that, hey, if you want to live in a blue state and advocate for these things, you're going to still have those rights. Um, but it's just not going to be the case at, this, at the federal level. That's a great point. You really do see uh, the fear, I think, from a lot of these pro-choice advocates not understanding how the laws in their states actually work. No one's going to come and make uh, abortion illegal in a state like New York or California. In fact, the opposite uh, is happening. And I think this also shows us, too, Morgan, kind of the degradation we've seen in our school system where simple lessons in civics, like separations of powers, if more, you know, especially young people had this foundational knowledge, they wouldn't be freaking out in the way that we see them freaking out. Yeah, actually, John, so in my free time, I do fun things like watch Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's Instagram Lives and her content. <laughs> so we don't have to, right? You watch them so we don't have to. <laughs> Exactly. So then I could go on Newsmax and let you know what she's saying, because she just talks for a long time, to be honest. But she was going into this concept that, hey, maybe we do need to start looking at state policy and lower. And so the organized left already does that, but they do have a base that wants top down, one size fits all approaches to pretty much all solutions. That's why they really care about who's going to be president. They care about who's going to be in the Senate and the, the House of Representatives. And it's really conservatives that across the nation, do really well with governor races. They do well with state legislatures. And to know that Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is now wanting to focus on state-level policy, I'm excited about this because I'm ready to bring it to them, too. I'm really excited to participate in these arguments and these policy uh, decision-making processes that we're going to see in a lot of states coming up. Because it really is a form of democracy that's much, you know, more down on, on ground level. The voters in each one of these states can determine what they want their abortion policies to be or not. And I, you know, to your point, too, about how, you know, the Democrats think everything is a federal solution for everything in Washington, D.C. I want to play something for you. This is a Health and Human Services Secretary Javier Becerra telling CNN that there are a number of conversations happening right now and what they can do to fight back against the Supreme Court's decision, including using federal land for abortions. Take a listen. We will take a, take a look at every option to make sure a woman has access to the care that she needs. Have you looked uh, at that We're not prepared one? to say what that means. Yeah, uh, all those things have been uh, put on the table. Everything is being put on the table. I mean, they have to do this, right, because so many of their voters are freaking out right now, Morgan. They're throwing anything at the wall, hoping it'll stick. Yeah, actually, John, what I was thinking about this morning when I was watching that original clip you just played, I was thinking of 
how did it get so extreme that now we're getting to these doomsday style concepts of maybe we can sneak this on a federal land plot so that we can have one tiny sliver in America where a woman can sneak away and abort her child. In my hopes, and a lot of conservative women, we care about the culture of this. We would hope that in America in the future, abortion is not a a normal option. It's really not something that somebody would say, oh, I found out I'm pregnant. I am horrified and I want to go get rid of this child. We would like to make sure that the culture changes. And that led me to this weird evaluation of, wait, the culture, the pop culture, the uh, family culture that they're pushing onto us, whether it's politicians or the pop culture Hollywood people or the media, they're selling us certain behaviors and actions and ways of life that lead to a very increased demand in things like mm. abortion. And then they use these cultural situations to rally up their base politically after creating massive chaos with broken families, the need for abortion, hookup culture, and so much more. So I find it kind of disturbing that those two things things are very, very connected. Yeah, you know, I think you see this too with a lot of Americans pushing back against uh, the critical race theory in schools. And, you know, this is popular culture being thrust upon so many folks. And they're like, wait, we never signed on for this. We don't agree with this. And I think another thing to back up your point is what we see from corporate America. So many corporations signing on to pay for women to travel for abortions. Uh, this is a very popular, I think, do, thing to do right now. But we know it's a business decision for them. It's not a moral decision that these companies are making. And, uh, you know, I think it forces a lot of women into an uncomfortable position to say, you know, if I don't take this money, am I going to be viewed as someone who's not in line with corporate culture here? Is that going to affect my employment long term? A lot of interesting questions being raised as a result of this. 